Okay, so we've got three different uh, induction situations, and uh, so let's start with this first one. We close this switch to complete the circuit, and when we do that, current begins to flow up this wire. It goes behind the uh, this coil, and then it goes down the front. It goes up and back, down in the front, up in the back, down in the front. Okay, so. The right-hand rule tells us that the resulting magnetic field points in this direction. Now when we look at this, this guy over here, we find that that now has a phi sub b that is pointing to the right and it's increasing. Okay, so that's part A. It asks, uh, describe the change in the magnetic flux in the coil on the right hand side. Now part B says what is the direction of the induced field, right? So the magnetic field that's induced here. Well, if uh, the magnetic flux is to the right and increasing, the induced field is going to try to cancel out that change right, by inducing a uh, field that points to the left. And then in part C, if you have an induced field that points this way, then that corresponds to an induced current that goes up like this on the front side, down in the back, and then through this resistor from right to left. So the induced current points from right to left. Okay, so for the second condition, we have uh, a constant current, but then this wire loop this rectangular wire loop here is moving away. So, all right, so let's consider this current, according to the right-hand rule, this loop is gonna be embedded in an external field that points into the page. Okay, so, and, and the magnetic field of a wire depends on mu naught i over two pi r. So as r increases, as this, uh, as this loop moves away, the magnetic field of the wire is going to decrease. Okay, so the change in magnetic flux is that the magnetic flux is into the page, but it is decreasing. Okay, the resulting induced field in the loop is going to try to cancel out that change, right? So that's the induced field, right? The loop is going to try to generate X's to replace the X's that are being lost. All right, and if the induced current is into the page like that, or the induced field is into the page like that, that can only come if the induced current it goes around like this, which is clockwise. All right, finally, uh, we have a steadily increasing current in the outer loop. What happens to the flux in the inner loop? Well, the magnetic field associated with this outer circular loop points into the page. Right, so this square loop is immersed in a field that points into the page, and that field is increasing. So the magnetic flux is into the page, and it's increasing. Now the square loop is going to try to cancel that out by pointing out of the page. So the square loop is going to have an induced field that points out of the page. For an induced field to point out of the page, that requires a counterclockwise current. All right, that's it.